Welcome to this lesson on congruent triangle measures. So remember, if two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding sides and angles will be congruent or equal. So in this first example, it says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, and we want to find all missing sides and angles. And there's a note that triangles may not be drawn to scale. All that means is the triangles might not look like they are exactly congruent, but we are to assume they are because we have this congruency statement. Okay, so I know that line segment AB or side AB should be congruent to DF based on my congruency statement. So they will be equal in measure. So DE will also be 8. And then DF would correspond with AC, so they would both be 12. BC corresponds to the EF, so they would both be 9. So all corresponding side lengths are the same. And then that's the same for angle measures. So angle B corresponds with angle E. They're both the same, 94 degrees. And then angle F and angle C will be equal, both 35 degrees. Now to find the third angle, we have to think about what the angles of a triangle add to equal. And we know that the three angles of a triangle add to equal 180. So I can add up 94 and 35, which gives me 129. And then I can subtract that from 180, which will give me 51. So angle A and angle D are 51 degrees. And then I just want to fill out these blanks on the right hand side. So angle A, the measure is 51. Remember this little M just stands for the degree measure. C is 35. E is 94. D is 51. Line segment AC is 8. DE is, let's see, um, oops, sorry, I have this wrong. AC is 12, DE is 8, and then EF is 9. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and do the next example. Triangle RST is congruent to triangle XYZ. Solve for X, then find the lengths of the missing sides. And again, the note triangles may not be drawn to scale, so we are to assume they are congruent based on this statement. So these are corresponding sides, and since the triangles are congruent, we know those sides are congruent, which means the lengths of those sides are the same. So we can set the expressions that represent those lengths equal to each other. And then we are just gonna solve this like a normal equation. I'm going to start by subtracting x from both sides. All right, so x minus x, that's zero. 2x minus x is x, and then bring everything down. And then I want to isolate I, uh, the x, the variable, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0, x equals 15. Okay, so that is x, so we're good on that. Now to find the lengths of the missing sides, we're going to substitute 15 in for x for each expression. So. This one is x plus 5, so I can substitute x for 15 plus 5, which gives me 20. And then I'll do the same thing here, which will also give me 20. And we know they have to be the same because they are congruent. All right, one last example. Triangle JKL is congruent to triangle MNO. Solve for x, then find the measures of the missing angles. So again, these are corresponding angles. They are equal, so I can set them equal to each other. And by the way, it does not matter which expression you write first. Either way, you'll get the same answer. Also, you don't need parentheses, um, and you don't need the degree measure marking. So I just need to write the expressions. All right, so I'm going to start by subtracting x from both sides. 3x minus x is 2x. Then I'll add 6 to both sides. 2x equals 56. And then divide both sides by 2. 
So x equals 28. All right, and then I need to substitute 28 in for x into both expressions to get the actual degree measure for the angles. So 28 plus 50, that gives me 78 degrees. And I know these are the same. You may want to check just to make sure you didn't make a mistake, but they should both be 78 degrees. Okay, you can stop the video now and go ahead and complete congruent triangle measures practice and check it with your teacher.